Hi everyone, Alexandra here for another day of 30 Days of Symphony. Well, last night when I was recording my intro for Beethoven Symphony Number no. 4, remember I said this was our final, final installment of our survey of the Beethoven symphonies? Well, I lied. <laughs> I lied. I really did. Because I just thought today... I, I don't know, but going through this cycle of Beethoven's symphonic works, I'm just discovering I love this composer's music even more than I thought I did. I don't know what it is, but I have this kind of problem with Beethoven. I always go into it thinking, oh, I don't really love this piece. And then I get to know it all over again, and it's like, wow, I really do love this piece. I had the same exact experience when we all <clears throat> performed the Fifth Symphony together of Beethoven just in early March, and I was just going into it thinking, oh, not another Beethoven five. And then, as I think you all know, it, it was just one of the great experiences, one of the greatest experiences I've had um, conducting uh, the LSO or really any orchestra anywhere. Beethoven has this power to delight and amaze, which just never gets stale. I think Mozart has that quality too, but I digress. The reason why I fibbed unknowingly um, last night about Beethoven IV being the last of the cycle, because I just got to have one last look, one last listen back at the magnificence of Beethoven as a symphonic composer. And, you know, I thought it would be good for everyone if we just heard from the place where it all began. What I'm introducing right now is what could, broadly speaking, be called the Beethoven Symphony Number no. Zero, the rarely played but very treasurable orchestral arrangement of Beethoven's early work, the work that made him really famous for the first time, his Septet in E flat from the year 1799. Opus 20, a very early opus number, but followed immediately after by the Symphony Number no. 1, of course, which is the official start of Beethoven's cycle of nine symphonies. It's really important to hear the Beethoven Septet because this is really where it all began. This is not some trailblazing Beethoven symphony, but a work of domestic chamber music in the late Viennese classical style, completely of the style of Vienna in the 1790s. This is, think of this Beethoven septet as, think of it as his final exam, his dissertation for his beloved teacher, Franz Josef Haydn, Papa Haydn. It's his, it's his dissertation, it's his final exam for Papa Haydn, because this work is totally, completely, even more than the, the Symphony Number no. 1, which we were talking about is mainly a traditional kind of late Haydn symphony. This is even more so, completely conversant in that reigning style, a work that would have surprised no one. And yet, if you listen carefully, yes, it's like Haydn, yes, it's like Mozart. The order of movements is actually modeled on a very famous um, serenade for string trio that Mozart had written about a, a decade before. It's like Haydn, it's like Mozart, and yet it's not. There's this gutsy, punchy thing going on that is no one, no one but Beethoven. Notice that the first movement gets this truly weighty, slow introduction, this, this, this introduction of real drama and, and, and pathos. And then the whole first movement is just, it doesn't sound like a kind of a, a house music, as the Germans say, a kind of a, a house, you know, domestic music making piece. This really does sound like the first movement of the symphony. By the same token, the slow movement has this unending solo for the clarinet. He wrote this for a septet of clarinet, horn, bassoon, and string quartet, 
that is one each of every string instrument, one violin, one viola, one cello, and one double bass. The kind of work that was written for people to play in their homes. That being said, you had to have some pretty amazing musicians playing in your homes because you'll see that the first violin part in particular is uh, truly virtuosic. The other reason that I wanted to include this are one last look at Beethoven before we go on to the world of that musical trailblazer of the next generation, in some ways the Beethoven of Paris of the 1830s, Hector Berlioz, is that there is a tradition, there is a tradition, my friends, of playing Beethoven's septet as a miniature symphony. The greatest example of this was the great American, well, he was a great Italian conductor who came to America like so many great, uh, so many Europeans, great and small, in the, the dark days of the 1930s, Arturo Toscanini, who, as you probably know, became the maestro of the NBC Symphony Orchestra. Yes, it's true. For a brief shining moment, all of our major television networks had their own symphony orchestras. And the greatest of them by far was the NBC Symphony that was basically created for Toscanini. In the dark, dark year of 1939, Arturo Toscanini conducted an entire cycle of the nine Beethoven symphonies. There were, in addition to that, two honorary symphonies to make it like a cycle of 11 Beethoven symphonies. There was, as we were talking about a few nights ago, the four overtures to Beethoven's Fidelio, the Fidelio overture, and then the, the earlier version of the opera called Leonora, the Leonora overtures one, two, and three. And then to begin the cycle, there was this as like a Beethoven symphony number zero, Toscanini's own expansion for symphony orchestra of the Beethoven septet. Basically, he left the wind parts alone and just expanded the string quartet to be a full orchestral string section. The effect is absolutely beguiling. And now that we've done the whole journey of Beethoven symphonies from the symphony number no. one through the mighty, magnificent symphony number no. nine, that, that work which is truly one of the summits of the classical music canon, truly one of the summits of our civilization, I just want you to experience the musical mustard seed from which everything grew. This gorgeous, but again, surprisingly, surprisingly symphonic in, in feel, this symphonic septet in E-flat by the very young, but already very gifted Ludwig van Beethoven of 1799. Here from 1939, the NBC Symphony Orchestra. And I just wanted you to have, if only one glimpse of his work because he was truly one of the greatest conductors of all time. In the opinion of some, the greatest conductor who ever lived, Arturo Toscanini.